This is Valley View News. Sandy is coming earlier than expected and has delayed several flights from LAX to the East Coast. West Hollywood may have a new proposal that will eliminate free Sunday parking and make you pay after 6. CSUN has just opened the LGBT Pride Center. It's the only one in the San Fernando Valley. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Maribel Serrano. And I'm Tiffany Miles. What was known as Hurricane Sandy has made landfall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The National Hurricane Center has reduced Sandy to a post-tropical cyclone called Superstorm Sandy. It is still considered one of the largest storm systems to ever hit the U.S. The storm has already killed at least 69 people in the Caribbean and at least two in the U.S. More than 3 million people in 10 states are without power. The mayor of Atlantic City did not require people to evacuate New Jersey. Governor says it is no longer safe for first responders to go in and recommends people hunker down. Winds are still being clocked at around 85 miles an hour. Sandy is expected to affect over 800 miles from the East Coast to the Great Lakes. Authorities grounded thousands of flights along the Northeast Corridor because of Superstorm Sandy. That left thousands of passengers stranded all over the world. Major airlines canceled all of their flights into and out of New York's three airports. Tracking agencies Flight Aware says nearly 7,000 flights have been canceled. Passengers may be stranded for a week as airlines find ways to put them on the next available flight. Superstorm Sandy has also been affecting New York City subway services. Metropolitan Transportation Authority workers are shutting down all trains. The MTA says they will keep service closed throughout the storm. The shutdown will likely last for a few days. Residents are already being affected. Tomorrow I, I won't be able to come to work due to the fact because of the trains, so maybe a taxi, but that's kind of expensive, so I might just stay home. And staying home is exactly what officials encourage people to do. The subways will take a while to get back in service after the storm. Workers will have to walk the miles of track to make sure there is no damage. West Hollywood may soon become a more expensive place to park a car. The city might extend the hours parking meters are active and eliminate free parking on Sundays. Valley View News reporter Andre Martinez joins us from the newsroom with more on the controversial plan. And it's a controversial proposal indeed. The city says the plan will help free up parking spaces for short-term parkers and the extra revenue will pay for security for the city. But some people say it's just a money grab. People may have to feed their meters more often in West Hollywood to avoid a parking ticket. The city is considering extending the hours of more than 2,000 parking meters. But the new plan would require meters to be fed four to eight hours longer each day and eliminate free parking on Sundays. The Transportation Commission hopes to submit the new parking meter proposal by November, but some people don't want to have to deal with these meters more than they already have to. I'm not happy about it. There's too many ways for the city to rip off the average consumer here. They're looking to squeeze every nickel, every penny that they could find from the people who live in the community. Some businesses fear the changes will hurt their bottom line. Restaurant manager Roberto Hernandez says the lack of a parking lot makes them vulnerable. I think it will hurt the business because more uh, people will not park. They'd uh, rather look for like establishment that provide parking. Proponents of the plan say extended metered parking would leave spaces open for short-term parkers to slide in and out and can cut the city's traffic congestion by 30 percent. WeHo parking operations manager Jackie Rocco says more metered parking means more customers for businesses. We have a lot of businesses in West Hollywood that rely on parking meters for all their parking needs because they don't have any off-street parking and by keeping enforcing those meters um, until the hours of operation that the businesses are open, we get that kind of turnover. Because of the many visitors that West Hollywood attracts, some residents will reluctantly accept the change. Well, I'd like to pay less for parking, but I certainly understand the reasons for doing it um, because this is a popular place to come. The city council predicts the extended hours will generate $1 million in annual revenue. Rocco says the monies will be used to make the city safer. Again, it's for increased security citywide, so all of the monies um, that will be generated from these extended hours will go right back into the community. If adopted, the plan will go into effect early next year. WeHo is waiting on the results of a survey sent out to businesses on whether they would support the proposal. The city would also phase in the new hours over a two-month period to give people enough time to adjust. 
23 California schools have lost an important academic ranking because they cheated. Offenses included helping students correct mistakes or coaching them with actual test questions. The state defines this as adult irregularities. If the cheating affects at least 5% of students at a school, the campus loses its annual rating on California's Academic Performance Index. CSUN's queer students have a new center where they can go for mentorship and support. Valley View News reporter Sharnay Davenport was at the colorful grand opening and has more on the story. After two years of planning, CSUN's LGBTQ community finally has a place to call home. The University Student Union proudly supports CSUN's community of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning students. The center is recognized as the only in the San Fernando Valley to hold services for the queer community. I couldn't be happier. Pride Center coordinator Serena Loeb is proud to have the facility right on campus. Students don't have to travel far. They just walk across, across the quad and, you know, to get support, to meet others, to learn about our LGBTQ peer mentor program. For so many years, there have been no services for LGBTQ students in the area. This center is more than just a room. To peer mentor Cadence Valentine, it represents a breakthrough. And to actually be standing in front of it today, I, I can't even put it into words. In honor of this achievement, activities included a community quilt, helpful handouts, and a photo shoot with the founders of the No Hate campaign. And in this area, students are sharing their coming out stories and giving their advice to those struggling in the LGBTQ community. Don't change who you are and it's going to be okay. No matter who you are, how, you know, what your sexuality is, what your gender is, we're here. Just hold out. It really does get better. I know it's become a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's true. We're here. You're queer. Get used to it. In Northridge, I'm Sharnay Davenport for Valley View News. One man is dead and another wounded after a Halloween party gunfight in Florence. Los Angeles police say the shooter opened fire on another man. The victim returned fire, injuring the suspect. The victim died at the scene. The first shooter is recovering at a hospital. Police said they were investigating and did not immediately release the names of those involved. Over 1,000 cyclists cruised around Newport Beach in memory of two bike riders who were killed in a separate hit-and-run accident. The two-mile-long bike ride aimed to spread awareness and raise money for bicycle safety. One cyclist says there is a huge need for safety around Irvine, Costa Mesa, and Newport Beach. The traffic division commander of the Newport Beach Police Department says that people need to know the rules of the road. Two U.S. senators want federal regulators to ban energy drinks that have high levels of caffeine in additives. The Food and Drug Administration says it is investigating five deaths in which the consumption of monster drinks was cited. At Cal State Northridge, students say energy drinks can hurt more than help. I think it's possible because it's too much caffeine. If you have too much of anything, it can be a bad thing. And I know that I've seen people chug like three or four in an hour, so that can be good for you. Uh, anything that keeps your body awake when it's not supposed to be, uh, I, I believe you could die from it. It gets their heart speed up, and it depends if they're doing like some extraneous activity, then, then yeah, their heart will beat extra fast, and then like they could die. A representative from Monster Beverage said the company was not commenting on the matter. The city of El Monte is fighting the beverage industry over a plan to tax sugary drinks. El Monte Mayor Andre Quintero thought a tax initiative would help fight the city's high obesity rate. But the beverage industry has used consultants from across the country to help derail the proposal. The city has been covered with no on itch measure signs and billboards. The industry has attached place cards to soda bottles, warning customers that drinks would cost more if the measure is approved. The proposal calls for a one-cent tax on each ounce of sugar-sweetened beverage sold. California's Correction Secretary Matthew Cate is resigning. Cate oversaw an historic shift in the state's criminal justice system. He sent thousands of lower-level criminals to county jails instead of state prisons. He announced he would become executive director of the California State Associations of Counties. Under the new position, Cate will deal with the result of the prison plan. His prison shift left some county jails crowded and prompted complaints it was increasing crime. Dogs in L.A. County can enjoy over an acre of fun in a new park built just for them. And baseball has crowned its newest World Series champions. These stories and more after the break. Come on, let's go. Just a minute, I gotta finish this. Wait, you're gonna post those pictures of Mary? Yep. 
She thinks she's so hot. But her mom and dad will see him. Her grandmother, her little sister, everyone she knows, it's gonna kill her. Who cares? Just a couple of pictures. It's no big deal. No big deal? Don't. This has gotta stop. talk to your kids I will The US Geological Survey recorded at least 8 aftershocks from the 3.9 quake in the Santa Clarita Valley. The earthquake struck shortly before 8:30 in the morning. There were no reports of injuries or significant damage. The USGS says the quake was felt throughout the San Fernando and Antelope Valleys as well as in the LA basin. Aftershocks started just minutes after the earthquake, and others continued up to an hour after the initial shake. Plenty of tails are wagging in La Crescenta these days. The Crescenta Valley Dog Park is open to four-legged business. Valley View News reporter Claudia Alanis went to check it out, and she joins us from the studio. Cities all around the Los Angeles area have dog parks, but the Crescenta Valley Dog Park is the first one operated by the county. And one of the best parts about it, at least for the dogs, they can leave their leashes at home. Charlie. Charlie. LA County's newest dog park is in Crescenta Valley Park in La Crescenta. It is 1.5 acres of gated off land where dogs can roam without the hindrance of leashes. This is LA County's first off-leash dog park and people wouldn't have it any other way. I think the dogs get along a lot better and socialize a lot better uh, off the leash. I think all dog parks should be off leash. Um, having a dog on a leash is a completely different dynamic for the dogs. It puts them in a more protective position. The park includes separate sections for small and large dogs, a six foot high fence, and a watering station for dogs that circulates fresh water. The park cost $645,000 to build, but it's hard to put a price tag on the community activism and grassroots lobbying that really made it a reality. Without that activism, dogs here, like Raja, may not have been able to roam free. The park was part of a more than five-year effort by a volunteer group, CV Dogs. Cheryl Davis is president of the Crescenta Valley Town Council and treasurer of CV Dogs. I think Crescenta Valley Park was somewhat underutilized. It's 32 acres, and a lot of times there weren't a lot of people there. And now there's a whole other use, and it's really important to the entire county because this is the first Los Angeles County Parks um, dog park. Montrose Pet Hospital staff are happy about the new park, but have some tips for dog owners before they take their dogs to the park. I'd say you just know your dog really well. You want to avoid taking a really skittish dog to a dog park where they might get bullied by a bunch of other dogs. My dog in particular is like that too. Um, and just know, you know, which side they belong on. Small dog side, big dog side, and sometimes they just don't belong there at all just because they really don't do well with other dogs. I would say make sure they're all vaccinated. There's a lot of dogs here and they're coming into contact with a lot of, you know, different kind of germs and things in the environment. So make sure they're up to date on their vaccines. Anyone interested in volunteering at the dog park can apply at the LA County Parks website. Dogs and owners who have a busy schedule don't have to worry. The park is open from dawn to dusk seven days a week. Back to you. An earthquake with a 7.7 .7 magnitude has struck British Columbia. It set off a small tsunami. Officials urged people to stay away from beaches and the shoreline. The tremor was followed by aftershocks up to 4.6 in magnitude. There have been no reports of damage or injuries. The first day of a ceasefire in Syria ended with dozens being killed. The four-day truce was in observance of a Muslim holiday. It was intended to provide a brief break from the bloody violence and fighting. Instead, 49 people were killed across the country. The number included 10 people who died after a car bomb went off in a Damascus neighborhood. Syrian rebel groups say they would have honored the ceasefire if the government released all prisoners from surrounding sites. Mexico City has taken the unusual step of banning alcoholic beverages in one of its major entertainment districts. The area is the esplanade of Plaza Garibaldi where there have been complaints of public violence and the use of illegal substances. Drinks can still be sold at bars and cantinas outside of the plaza. 
government officials say they tried to work with bars and liquor stores on a solution, but the businesses did not respond. Former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has been found guilty of tax fraud. A Milan court sentenced Berlusconi to four years in prison. The sentence also bars him from holding public office for five years. Berlusconi will likely appeal the verdict and may not go to prison for years. The case was centered on millions of dollars in the buying and selling of rights to American TV programs and movies. This conviction is a setback for Berlusconi, who has dominated Italian politics for the last 20 years. The American Civil Liberties Union is suing the Department of Homeland Security over strict photograph and videotape policies. The DHS prohibits photos and video taken at the international borders. The ACLU says this violates the Constitution. It says international ports of entry are not Constitution-free zones. The lawsuit is filed on behalf of the activists who tried to photograph possible human right abuses at the California-Mexico border. The ACLU says that in some cases, authorities erase photographs taken by activists along the borders. They've done it again. San Francisco fought hard and took another World Series. Did they ever? Tasneem Hanafi is going to tell us all about the sweep and more. Hey, Tasneem. Hey, Tiffany. The San Francisco Giants have won the World Series after beating the Detroit Tigers in a four-game sweep. Top of the second, Brandon Belt hits an RBI triple to score Hunter Pence. Giants take the lead one to nothing. But Detroit fights back with a two-run homer from Miguel Cabrera. The Tigers now lead 2-1. to one. But it wasn't enough for the Tigers to come back, though. In the top of the sixth, Buster Posey hits a two-run home run. The Giants take the lead 3-2. to two. The Tigers answer with a home run of their own by Delman Young to tie the game. And now we go into extra innings. And Marco Scudero drives in the winning run. Giants win 4-3. to three. This is their second title in three years. In NFL football, the Broncos squared off against the Saints in Denver. Let's pick up the action in the second quarter. The Broncos are up by seven, but Drew Brees connects with Darren Sprawls, and he takes it to the house for the 30-yard touchdown. But Peyton Manning responds. He finds a wide-open Eric Decker in the end zone. Broncos back on top, 14-7. to And Denver never looked back. Manning throws a dart to Demarius Thomas for the score. Broncos up 24-7. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Manning finds Eric Decker again. The Broncos beat the Saints 34-14. to The New York Jets were looking to bounce back after last week's loss to New England. This week, they hosted Miami. Let's go to the action. On the, punter. the Dolphins' Jimmy Wilson blocks the punt by Dan Carpenter. Olivier Vernon recovers the ball for the touchdown. The Dolphins are at it again. It's third and goal, and Daniel Thomas takes the handoff and wiggles his way through the defense to score another TD. Miami beats the Jets 30 to 9. Now moving on to something more local, the Cal State Northridge women's soccer team clenched the number two seed in the Big West Conference Tournament. This came after a one to nothing victory over the defending tournament champions, Long Beach State. They will now take on Cal Poly in the semifinals of the tournament at Ant Eater Stadium in Irvine. On to the men's side, the Matadors clinched the Big West South Division. With two games remaining in the regular season, the Manadors already know they will host the semifinal game of the Big West Tournament. Cal State Northridge women's volleyball team has beaten the defending Big West champions, Long Beach State. The Matadors were led by Casey Hinger's 17 kills and Brittany Graff added 13 kills of her own. The game was pushed to five sets. The last set season had 13 kills and won it 15 to 12. Northridge has improved to a 7-5 record in the Big West and now is in third place in the conference. The Matador women's team will open a three-game home stand against the Cal Poly Mustangs. It's an exciting victory for the Matadors. We'll bring you another sports update next week. Back to you. CSUN students had a chance to show off their skills in the university's talent show. And some seniors in Japan are jumping and dancing their way into cheerleading competitions. More after the break. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. When tragedy struck Indonesia and Haiti, the world responded. 
The famine, war, and drought affecting the Horn of Africa right now is larger than both these crises combined, and the world should be paying attention. Text a donation of $10, but do more than donate. Forward the facts to everyone you know. Forward from our site, forward on Facebook, and forward on Twitter. We are the relief. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at fatherhood.gov. Thousands of people gathered near Alvarez Street in downtown Los Angeles to celebrate El Dia de los Muertos. The festival featured live music, skeleton decorations, dancing, and face painting. There were also altars made by families to tell stories of loved ones who died. The Mexican tradition is based on the belief that the souls of the dead come back to visit their families each year. Parents see Day of the Dead as an opportunity to teach their children about their culture. The 11th CSUN Student Showcase packed the Plaza del Sol Performance Hall. Valley View News' Mark Sherman was there and he joins us in the studio now. Hey Mark. Officials say it was a first for CSUN Student Showcase. Cash prizes for the winners. And there was plenty of great talent that wanted it. Check it out. Ten CSUN acts competing for over $1,000 in cash. A celebrity panel of judges that included R&B and jazz singer Shantae Moore and an R&B singer-songwriter whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, Khalees. Guest performances by Kaba Modern and America's Best Dance Crew semifinalist and CSUN's own R&B singer Trajan Wilkin. And DJ Malski a producer and DJ who has performed with Stevie Wonder and Kanye West. The first award of the night was decided by the fans. For $150, it came down to Committed Feet and CSUN Hip Hop. CSUN. The next three awards were for $200 each. Best dance. Go to CSUN Hip Hop. Best in expression. It's to be right. And the big one for three hundred dollars in a professional photo shoot. The winner for best in show is. Shay Blue said she knew no one in the audience. The confident and talented 18-year-old freshman came on stage, engaged the crowd, then sang a song she wrote. I wrote it really recently because it was, it was like like a lot of experiences with my boyfriend because he like didn't have had never heard of Motown, so I like mixed Motown and like we went to a yoga class together because I'm trained to be a yoga teacher. So I wrote it like based off of that. Such a fun, energetic night all around. The DJ was hyping up the crowd. The guest performances were great. The CSUN talent was awesome. And the fans definitely agreed. The energy was on point. It was great. The definitely. Energy. And the MC really had the crowd going. So yeah. it was always fun. It never had a down moment. I was excited. And uh, it turned out to be really good. Everyone was just there to have fun. And I, I love I love environment like that because I'm a fun guy. So I, it was the best little money I ever paid to see a show. The last guy we heard from is Brian Drake. He was a fan during the show, but he also helped choreograph the performance by CSUN Hip Hop. Drake said he thought the experience was better than when he went to this year's MTV Awards. Back to you. The Kardashians may be facing a lawsuit over the line of beauty products. Rigo Villalobos has the entertainment news. Here's the scoop. Hollywood's largest entertainment union is cutting its size. The National Board of SAG-AFTRA voted to reduce the number of locals from 33 to 25. This is part of the process of merging SAG and AFTRA into one union. Closing eight of the locals will mean cutting some of the directors on the union's national board. It is not clear which locals will be shot. SAG-AFTRA represents 160,000 members across the country. A trespasser at Tom Cruise's home was shot with a taser and then arrested. Police say it turned out he was intoxicated and he was a neighbor who might have entered the property by mistake. Authorities say a security guard at the actor's Hollywood mansion tasered the man and held him until police arrived. They say the 41-year-old man was treated at a hospital and arrested on suspicion of trespassing. 
They say neither Cruz nor his family were at home when the incident happened. The Kardashians have been accused of stealing the name of Chroma Beauty, a high-end makeup line. Co-owner of the cosmetic line says Kim, Chloe, and Courtney are cheapening his cosmetics by copying the name. The original cosmetic line is spelled with a C and the Kardashians are spelling theirs with a K. The co-owner says he's upset because the Kardashians are planning to sell their products in less fancy stores like CVS pharmacies, Sears, and Ultra. He says he fears his high-end customers will stop buying his products. The Kardashians did not immediately comment. They have reportedly not been contacted by the Chroma Cosmetics owner, but he says that his legal team is working on that. You're telling me that there is a movie company in Hollywood right now that is funded by the CIA? Yes, sir. The American film Argo took the box office title this weekend, raking in more than $12 million. The thriller was directed by Ben Affleck and has made more than $60 million since its release. Sony Pictures animated film Hotel Transylvania in 3D gets second place. Good morning, Mavy Wavy. Happy birthday, my little mouse. Thank you, Dad. The PG-rated film features the voices of Adam Sandler and Kevin James. This spooky and fun movie made $9.5 million this weekend and more than $130 million overall. And Cloud Atlas makes the top three with $9.4 million. That is all for entertainment. Back to you. A CSUN student uses his dance skills whenever he can, when he's standing, walking, even when he's riding a scooter. As Valley View News reporter Alexa Funk tells us, he also loves to teach his moves to youngsters. Boom, cut, boom, 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 cut, cut, boom, cut, boom, 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 boom. Sean's feet are always moving. Whether he's under a shady tree doing his homework or riding his scooter to get to his kinesiology classes, Sean's feet are an important part of his life. Sean is a dancer. Although just a hobby, he uses his talent to give to others. These dancing feet took Sean to Chihuahua, Mexico during the summer to help orphans at Casa de la Esperanza. While there, he was able to become a mentor to the children and teach them dance routines. For Sean, sharing his talent is one of the most important things he can do. Blessing is not something that is meant to be kept for yourself. And so for me, part of moving away from being selfish is to be selfless and actually give back through dancing. Sean was born in the Philippines and moved to the United States when he was 12 years old. Dance helped him stay away from the gangs he grew up around. Friends either were trying to get into a gang or were in a gang. And for me, dance has become an outlet to get away from those and to do something more positive, to do something that's more beneficial for me. Sean dances anywhere and any way he can, even using reflections and windows as mirrors for his dancing. Sean advises aspiring dancers to just get out there and try. I feel like no matter what, you can't please everybody. Dance styles have evolved, I guess just because people tried something different. In Northridge, I'm Alexa Fung for Valley View News. Some energetic Japanese senior citizens have taken the stage for a cheerleading competition. 90 dancers and eight teams showed their moves in the contest held in Yokohama. Each team performed a three-minute routine in matching uniforms. The Japan Senior Cheer Association launched the annual competition four years ago. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Maribel Serrano. And I'm Tiffany Miles. Have a great day.